We just don't want to always assume that we have the whole story. We're always getting a limited perspective. Lawrence, a bustling university with a wide range of races, ethnicities, and identities. While Lawrence has historically been more progressive than the city it sits in, being the second ever co-ed university in the country, it was still not an accepting environment for Black students at the time of its founding in 1847. A turning point in the history of diversity at Lawrence came in the form of a 1948 speech delivered on campus by Dr. George Kelsey, theologian known for his relationship with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. Kelsey spoke to the Student Christian Association on the racist rhetoric that was used to justify slavery and suggested ways in which students could overcome their prejudices. He pointed out that at the time, Lawrence didn't have any black students and suggested that this was in opposition with the Christian character of the university. Several black students were admitted to Lawrence by 1960. In the late 60s and early 70s, anti-racism student activism at Lawrence reached a high point. One example occurred um, on February 20th, 1969, when members of the Association of African Americans at Lawrence presented President Curtis Tarr with a list of 10 demands titled Now or Never. The list also expressed the students' dissatisfaction with the current academic and social situation for black students at Lawrence. Although the 1970s was an era of big racial change at Lawrence, prospects were still bleak. But as we look backwards into Lawrence's turbulent history with diversity, we must also look forwards to its future. Headed by its first black woman president, present day Lawrence boasts a growing black student population, new and constantly improving diversity programs, and a president who is ready to make a difference. For me, it was really being drawn to an environment that really steeped itself in excellence but also had this theme of light. Lawrence is allowing me to shine my light here at a place that really um, shines light brightly into the world. Although President Carter's arrival at Lawrence speaks to a new beginning, Lawrence's students of color still see a lot of room for improvement. I do not feel accommodated here at Lawrence as a black student of color. When I first got to college, to be a black student at Lawrence, I kind of felt like a diversity token. Like I still feel kind of like odd because most of the population is made up of white students. And I guess for like campus wise, it feels like a lot of the POC students have to stick together to make our own communities because the population is largely white. When I first came here, I was 17. And at the time, like I felt very alienated being here, seeing a bunch of like white students and being like the only black student in the class was very, very isolating. But both of them are hopeful that President Lori Carter will bring positive changes with her. I feel like the Lawrence like community is very like broken up. Like people tend to stick with their own like I guess like community. So I guess just like having like a campus that is like in unison, and hopefully President Carter can do that. President Carter works with the Lawrence's DEIA program. We have a new VP for DEIA arriving on campus and um, absolutely plan to continue to move DEIA forward at the university, really making sure that we're focusing on a sense of belonging for everyone who is a member of our community. Moving forward, both faculty and students alike are hoping to work together to form a more inclusive environment. Just in general, just being more understanding of the experience that black students go through, thinking of yourself as a student, not just faculty here. I am a student-centered president because I started um, my work really focused on students, and that hasn't changed. I think that institutions of higher education really do have to listen to the students, understand what they need, and also listen to the larger society and what it will need from our students upon graduation. There is always work to be done. If you're not always um, creating new environments and more supportive environments, then you're falling behind in the work. It will never be completed, but Lawrence is doing a really good job across the institution, faculty, staff, students, at having the appropriate dialogues, challenging one another, and really asking ourselves the questions that need to be asked so that we can serve our students well. Every fragment of a story is worth telling. Without these voices and conversations, progress simply cannot be made. Progress is different to everyone, but most can agree that despite the leaps in racial equality that have been made since its inception, 
present day Lawrence is flawed. Recognizing this is an important step to moving forward. Moving forward can mean better accommodations for Lawrence's black students. Moving forward can mean having these conversations more openly. Moving forward can mean uplifting black voices so staff can better understand the struggles that students of color face. Progress is a profound undertaking, but ultimately an achievable one.